If you're thinking about building off the grid, I bet you're wondering what modern conveniences and appliances you might have to give up. But in this video, I'm going to share with you the appliances and modern conveniences that I easily incorporated into our solar powered off grid home. Just to give you a little backstory of how I decided to build a solar powered home was that before we built Twisted Oak, I was living in the Pacific Northwest and we lived in a very conventional home. And in the winter, we would often get these storms and the storms would come and there'd be several days of heavy rain and then we'd get wind. And the wind would knock down the trees and the trees would take down the power lines and we would lose power. Now, I'm not talking about losing power for a couple of hours. I'm talking about losing power for several days and even more than a week. And our electrical powered home became very unsafe. We no longer had any way to heat. We had no running water because we had a well and we needed an electric pump in order to pump the water to the house. We had no way to cook because the stove was electric and we had no way to flush our toilets because we needed water that needed the pump from the well. So this house became very dangerous and we had no way of even meeting our most basic survival needs in this conventional home. So when I decided to build off-grid and use solar power, I was adamant that my home would not necessarily need electrical power in order for us to be safe and to meet our basic survival needs. So Twisted Oak does not rely on electricity for basic survival. Really, we use our electricity for the cream on the top of life. So we do not need electricity to keep warm, to have running water, or to flush a toilet, or any of the things that a conventional home relies on for electricity. Because of this, we can keep our solar system relatively small. We only have a 1.2 kilowatt solar system. That's six solar panels up on our roof. And we are able to manage everything we need with that system. So because of this, I was able to keep our solar system relatively small. So the benefits of keeping a solar system small is very first is the price. It really keeps the price down to not have numbers of solar panels on your roof. Now, when you live off grid, you need batteries to store that power during the night. So if you have a lot of solar panels, you're gonna need a lot more batteries to balance that system, and that's gonna drive up the cost. The other reason I believe is that we should really be limiting the amount of solar panels we're using because they still are manufactured and that takes a lot of energy to manufacture them and they use resources. One of the first things I thought I was gonna to have to give up was all of those convenient kitchen gadgets. You know, the blender and the coffee grinder and the food processor. But what I found is that I can use any of those even on our small solar system. Now the reason why is because even though they draw a lot of power, it's for a short burst. So it doesn't take very long to grind your coffee or to make a smoothie. So you really can use those devices. The reason why I chose to get rid of a lot of them was I just wanted to declutter. I didn't want to have devices in my kitchen that only had one use. In fact, we found that a bowl and a wooden spoon can solve just about any kitchen problem. The other reason was I had kids and I really wanted them to have an understanding and more value into doing something with your hands and with by yourself. For instance, whipping cream. So have you ever seen a kid with a can of whipping cream? I mean, they can devour that can in a matter of minutes with no thought to how it was manufactured or made. So I tortured my kids by making them whip their own whipping cream. And it turned out to be such a great experience because if you sit at a boy at a table with a hand crank for whipping cream, then you can have a conversation with them. And then they also realize what effort it takes to make whipping cream. And they don't just devour it in a couple of minutes. They really savor it. Now the toaster was another story. So whenever you have a toaster or any device that takes heat, that requires heat, 
that is not a very efficient device to use to power with electricity. And a toaster is a prime example. That small little device takes a lot of power. And granted, it doesn't take very long to make a piece of toast, but it's significant. So I, got, I easily got rid of the toaster and I never missed it. But then when Matt moved in, my fiance, he kept complaining about the toast. He really missed his toast in a toaster. Now we still have toast, but we make it on a cast iron griddle just on the propane stove and we've never missed the toaster. So after he complained a while, I decided that for Christmas I would really give him a treat and I bought him a toaster. Now we plugged in the toaster and we were comparing about how much power that it took. And so still to this day, the toaster sits in the cupboard and I think we've used it maybe once, maybe twice. Now our gas stove is just an off the shelf gas stove. We didn't have to get some special off grid expensive appliance. And most of our appliances can be off shelf now because they become so much more efficient. Now there's a couple of things I was really aware of when I was buying my gas stove. One, a lot of the gas stoves come with a gas range, but they come with an electric oven. Now you're not going to be able to run an electric oven off of an off grid system. So you want to look for an oven that's propane. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that even though you have that oven, it still probably will use an electronic thermostat, which means when you lose power, you won't be able to use the oven. But we find that a really minor inconvenience and we've rarely lost power anyway. The other thing that I noticed is that every appliance comes with a digital clock on it and some digital readout, which drives me nuts. So I wired the stove to a switch next to the oven and you can just flip the switch if you need to use the stove. So our refrigerator is just about the only appliance that I specifically got for off-grid living. It's a DC fridge, so it runs on direct current instead of alternating current. So that means that if our inverter breaks down or turns off or we lose power, we still have refrigeration. Now this refrigerator is super insulated and it's super efficient. It has LED lights inside before other refrigerators did that. And it has all of the mechanics and compressors on the top of the refrigerator instead of down at the bottom so it doesn't heat up the kitchen. So it's super efficient, super quiet, and I wouldn't want any other refrigerator. The problem is these are becoming more and more difficult to find because the off-the-shelf refrigerators are meeting them in efficiency. Now our washing machine is just a run-of-the-mill off-the-shelf washing machine. It is very efficient because it's one of those front loaders, but it still takes a fair amount of power. So I do judge whether I'm gonna do laundry based on the weather. So if we have a bright sunny day, I might do three loads of laundry. If I know that there's gonna be a storm with several cloudy days coming up, I might skip the laundry and wait a couple days before I do it. But the beautiful thing about that is that it just connects you to nature and it keeps you um, looking at the cycles of the seasons and, and making your decisions about whether you're gonna use power that day. One of the biggest luxuries I think we have is our entertainment center. We have a flat screen TV and surround sound. Now that's one of those modern conveniences and luxuries that we definitely use depending on the sun. Now in the summer, we can watch movies all day and we don't even really have to worry about that. But in the winter, we take a look and if we have cloudy days coming, then we'll choose not to watch a movie and maybe read books instead. Now the other thing I did with my entertainment center is you've probably noticed on your entertainment center and your TV that all of these electronic devices have all these lights on them all the time. Now, they probably don't draw that much power, but just to be safe so it doesn't draw down our system, I wired a switch just like I did on the stove to the entertainment center. So from a flip of the switch on the wall, we can turn the power off to all of those devices that are running all those lights and, and blinking monitors and such. 
Now the one thing we definitely had to incorporate and make sure that we had power for were computers. Because by the time my kids went to public school in high school, they were required to have a computer. So both the kids had laptops and I have a laptop. And we found that the new laptops are so efficient that it's really not a problem on an off-grid home. In fact, a few years ago, I bought an iMac for work and I found that that is so efficient that it doesn't draw any more power than my laptop. Now you may not believe this, but I have a vacuum. When it came time to purge all of our stuff in Washington and move off grid, I just couldn't bear to get rid of my 1990s Royal Canister vacuum. So I kept it and I don't even know why I kept it because I didn't think I would be able to use it. But I'm really glad I did because you know, sometimes there's just a job that you need a vacuum for to get things really clean or to get those cobwebs or get those crevices. Now, most of the time, my daily routine is to sweep and use a mop. And I really love that. That's kind of part of my routine and part of my meditation time. But when you need a vacuum, it's really nice to have one. Now, they draw a lot of power. But even on our system, on a bright sunny day, I can run the vacuum. So I just have to be careful about when I use it. Now one thing that might surprise you is that we actually run power tools. And we had our solar system installed on the house by the time we got to the interior work of the house. So the interior work and all the woodwork was done using solar power. Now we did take a couple of precautions and that was we didn't run those skill saws and the grinders and the sanders all the way to the end of the day and to when it was getting dark. We would make sure that we would stop working with those power tools about mid-afternoon or late afternoon, depending on how much sunlight we had, in order for the batteries to recharge before night. So here's a spoiler alert for those parents who wanna use their off-grid as an excuse to limit their kids' screen time, because I did it. I told my kids that they couldn't have screen time or play video games or do any of those things until the batteries had completely charged up. And recently I was told I was unreasonable. But hey, as a parent, you've gotta do what you've gotta do, right? But the truth of it is, is they probably could have watched TV and they probably could have been on their computers. But I loved having that excuse that if there was gonna be some cloudy days that maybe they should read a book or play a game. I really believe that anyone who puts their mind to it can build a sustainable home too. And you don't have to build off the grid to reduce your impact on the planet and your mortgage and utility bills. You can build the same kind of home on the grid and drastically reduce those utility bills. I'm Christina Monroe. Scroll down and leave me a comment. Tell me what conveniences you would like to keep in your off-grid home. If you'd like to know more about off-grid self-sustaining homes, reducing your utility bills, and how you could design and build one too, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button down below. You can also download my free guide, the seven step quick start guide to planning your sustainable home. Check out the link to our website below where you'll find out more about our workshops, online courses, and my book with the complete story about how we designed and built our self-sustaining off-grid home. I post a video every Saturday morning, so stay tuned for more videos on designing, planning, and building your off-grid home.